Driver people. people. Welcome to our top five films of the 80s with special guest of the Breakfast Club Diner, Perry. Perry it is. All right, so what we're going to do here is that we're going to, sh you're welcome. We are going to share our honorable mentions for our top five films of the 80s. Then we are going to say 555, 444, and so on and so forth. So, yeah. I will be starting with my honorable mentions, which here are my honorable mentions. I have 12, just like Connor. Yes. Uh, a Christmas Story, Christmas Vacation, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Ooh. My Neighbor Totoro, Grave of the Fireflies, Stand By Me, Ooh. Big, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, One, Two That Almost made it back to the future and ghostbusters and the princess bride wow those are my 12 honorable mentions those are all excellent films thank so. you those should be on your top five list of some of them i know some of them i had a really hard time lining out back to the future yeah. and ghostbusters okay what are your honorable mentions my honorable mentions is blade runner red dawn total recall platoon and weird science i need to see weird science yeah i i, I have not seen like half of your movies and because they're rated R and you can't no, see rated R yet. Oh, you can't see rated R? What? Oh, we didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting right. board floor. Okay, so uh, my honorable mentions, I also have 12. Uh, say Anything, 16 Candles, uh, Blade Runner, TV's Big Adventure, uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Ooh. Clash of the Titans, Ghostbusters, Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back, The Little Mermaid, Annie, and I had such a hard time not including this in my top five but stand by me wow you guys are really impressive Thank i mean you. you guys weren't even born in the 80s but you picked some really <laughs> crucial movies that yes. some of them are remakes that really are horrible but <laughs> the originals are great yeah. especially clash of the titans yeah well man, horrible remake but we're not going to oh, talk yeah. about that yeah let's, let's not talk about that remake right now <laughs> all right so we are going to stop in our top five films so i will go first my number five film is rain man beautiful Beautiful, beautiful acting. I mean, gosh. Uh, oh, what's I'm forgetting the name now, but the person who played the man with the disability, uh, uh, Dustin, Hoffman. Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman, was uh, amazing. My second best role by an actor ever. First being Judd Nelson from The Breakfast Club. He was mm. so good because he had to act like a disabled person, and not only did he act perfectly like a disabled person, but you actually felt like he had the disability himself. It was amazing. I he obviously deserved to win the Oscar. Not only was he amazing, but Tom Cruise was also great. I mean, it's one of the only roles that he's like actually played that he's done super dramatic. He's done a super dramatic acting role with. And he was amazing. The directing is great in the movie. It goes by almost like that. I mean, you're like, oh my god, the movie's all already over. And it's two hours and 13 minutes. There is some great uh, chemistry between Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise. Because Tom Cruise, I bet that he had a really hard time acting against Dustin Hoffman. But he did great with that and the directing was amazing. It's just uh, sorry, I already said the directing was already the writing. All the dialogue was incredibly realistic. This is one of the most. What, this is a fantastically well-made film. Like it's probably in my top ten for best, most well-made films of all time Ooh. because it's just it's made brilliantly. So uh, that is my number five. What is your number five? Well, on a lighter scale, my top fives were basically blockbuster in the 80s because we saw when the lights were on and people are waiting in line to pay three dollars to see a movie those are, I'm gonna I picked my five favorite movies based on uh, popularity and the first one is yo Adrian Rocky 3 Mr. T Hulk Hogan uh, Mickey. It was a great movie. It was fun to watch. It was so unbelievable, but it was just an 80s tongue-in-cheek movie. People say it's the best guilty pleasure film of all time. Yes, it was fun. Yeah. All right, Connor, what is your number five? My number five film is one of the most fun films I've ever seen, Back to the Future. Oh, yeah. yeah. Amazing movie. The acting from both Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, they were both great. Um, special effects were really good. Good. For the 80s. For the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, it came out really close to Glass of the Titans, so. Yeah, and um, the, the writing was great. The directing was great. I love Robert Zemeckis. This is one of his best. Um, yeah, I love this movie. It's really fun, and if you haven't seen it yet, you have to. 
It's a great movie. I agree. I agree. Back to the Future Back is the future. amazing. Alright, your number four? Alright, my number four. Number four is a really, really fun film that I have to watch every time that I'm sick. That is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I mean, wow. What I love most about this film is the drama in it. There's drama throughout the film, but it's kind of put subtly in until the end. And the end is just an amazing scene. On top of that, it's hilarious. I mean, I saw it with, in a theater once at another at a screening, and everyone in the theater was laughing. It was It's a hilarious movie. It, I absolutely love that factor. The acting's also great. Matthew Broderick really put himself into the role, and his breaking of the fourth wall was just, it was great, because he was sort of explaining, you know, how, what was happening, and why it was happening, and it didn't feel expositional. They could have really made it feel like, oh, he's just talking to the camera to make it feel like exposition, but they didn't make it, make it feel like that at all. It's also just a really fun film, and it's a film that whenever you're just feeling down, or whenever you're sick, Pop it in and you'll feel better instantly. <laughs> it's a really fun film and amazing directing from John Hughes, one of my second favorite director. All uh, right, what is your number four? My number four, since we are in Oceanside, part of this movie was filmed in Oceanside, and number four, Tom Cruise, Top Gun. Yes. You know, fly me. I mean, we got we have it up here in the wall too. The F-14. Tom, Tom Cruise was such it was such a feel-good movie. You know, you had your ups, your downs, your anti-authority. Yet I'm gonna fly and make you spill your I mean it was a lot of action the soundtrack was amazing it, it was a, it, once again it was a blockbuster maybe not the best cinematography but a memorable movie if you were part of the 80s everybody remembers Top Gun and because your Ferris Bueller's was number four I used number three as my Ferris Bueller's I'm gonna switch my number three and I'm gonna surprise you guys on what my number three is oh okay so right. what's your number four Connor uh, my number four is my favorite action movie ever that I count as an uh, action movie. That's Raiders of the Lost Ark. I gotta change Paris, that too. <laughs> Paris, Harrison Ford was amazing. Like, I think this is Harrison Ford's best role. He was great in Star Wars, but this was much better. He, he really? actually felt like he was into the role, which he didn't really feel like in Star Wars. What? Uh, you didn't think he was into the role in Star Wars? Or how about, how about Patriot Games? Uh, I haven't, I haven't seen Patriot Games. Oh, okay. We won't yeah. talk about that. The, the action was... So you're an indie fan, not a Han Solo fan. What? Yeah. He, he was up next to a guy with a Chewbacca outfit. I mean, there was a hairy guy and Han. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a little Chinese guy. And, hey, Dr. Jones! <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Yeah. That's okay. um, Raiders or Temple of Doom? Which one was your favorite? Uh, Raiders. Oh, Raiders. Okay, Raiders. I, I'm thinking... Okay, I, I'll agree with that. Temple of Doom was phenomenal. Oh, that was a... Uh, um... Steven Spielberg did a great job directing. Yeah. I don't think it's his best. Uh, I don't think it's his best uh, job at directing a movie. I think he did better. Yeah, he did a great E.T. and uh, other films. I yeah, but this movie is just a really fun movie that critics will love and oh, yeah. and everyone will love. I don't know anyone who d dislikes this movie. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, Raiders is a, probably my fourth best directed Steven Spielberg film. And speaking of, my best directed Steven Spielberg film is E.T. The Extraterrestrial. This is a really, really fun film. It's a great film to show your children and also to show anyone because everyone will love this movie. It's got fantastic directing. Steven Spielberg, this is just, I can't believe how good his directing in this film was because I can't picture this film being as good without his directing because it, w it went by like that. The tone was perfect because it was silly but it also got dark at times yet the tone stayed consistent. The E.T. character is the cutest character in a film ever because he was just a really, he, he didn't really speak at all. He spoke very, very, very light English but just what his character did was really cute and I love how uh, he was tied to Elliot and how he drank the beer and got drunk and so did Elliot at school. Uh, there's just some great moments in this film and a lot of great drama as well and the kid actors in the film are great I love the uh, it's really early on in the film but the dinner scene where they're talking about uh, uh, where they're briefly mentioning the dad I thought that was a beautiful scene very well very well done with the dramatics so that is why E.T. the extraterrestrial is my number three what is your number three? 
Well, my number three was Ferris Bueller's, but somebody picked Ferris Bueller's before me, so we already talked about Ferris Bueller's. you can say Ferris Bueller's again. No, I'm going to say, I'm going to have to change it up to something lighthearted like Ferris Bueller's. Maybe not a big blockbuster, but The Three Amigos. The Three Amigos. The Three Amigos. You, have you seen it? Uh, I have not seen The Three Amigos. Oh, see. I haven't seen it. Either. See, we got to do some homework here. There was uh, some great comedians that were thrown together with a kind of tongue-in-cheek script. Um, it was fun. It was goofy. I mean, on the lighter side of like Ghostbusters and Ferris Bueller's, it, it was a lot of fun. A lot of people forget about the Three Amigos, but it, it's good to watch. Get some popcorn, throw it into the DVD player, and watch the Three Amigos. And number two, I have to change because you picked Raiders of the Lost Ark. So I'm going to pick my number two right now before you guys because you guys are picking all my movies. So the movie that I think is number two, you'll go back to your number three, is The Lost boys wow enough said our lost boys is i was really scared of that movie at the beginning because i was young but vampires are scary so i'm gonna pick a young Kiefer sutherland as the head vampire as my number two so what's your number three uh robert mentioned it as his number four but my third favorite film of all time is first viewers they are uh, as you said, the subtle drama. Like, when I first watched it, I said, it's okay. It's, it's kind of funny. Uh, but then I got sick, and then I watched it again, and it was like 20 times better. <laughs> and now whenever I watch it, I love it even even, even more, more. And the subtle drama was phenomenal. I didn't catch it the first time, but oh my god. Like, there's a scene where Cameron falls into the water after he got really upset. Set, and she may have tried to commit suicide. Yeah. It, it, was really, it could be, have been really dark. Yeah, which was a really horrible way to commit suicide. He was, he, yeah. was, he really didn't want to, he wanted the attention. Yeah. yeah. Like some of the people I know in Running for President. <laughs> oh, okay, let's not go there right now. Let's not offend some people. I, yeah. But yeah, I agree. And what I, another thing about Ferris Bueller's Day Off that I liked was how it sort of felt like uh, a character from the Breakfast Club. He could have been a character from the Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. He yeah. could have. He wasn't, but it sort of felt like that. Now, my number two is a tie, but they're two films from the same series, which is The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. In case you can't tell, I am a huge Star Wars fan, and if you've known me for any brief period of time, people just know that I am a huge Star Wars fan, and The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, while they aren't the best Star Wars film, because the best Star Wars film is Star Wars 1977. Still, this these two films are amazing. The Empire Strikes Back has a great tone. It's dark, but it also fits with the rest of the series. That's what I really, really liked about it. The action still holds up really well. The lightsaber oh, yeah. fights are great. The twist in it is amazing. I mean, I saw that twist when I was four or five, and I was shocked. I just, I was shocked. I, I am your father. Yeah, I was like, oh my goodness, and now everybody knows that twist. Yeah. Uh, but, you, well, it's, people knew it before, but when you're young, you don't know that twist, and then you see it, and your mind's blown, because that is such a brilliant twist that makes perfect sense. And what's awesome about that twist is, fun trivia, um, originally, that, that twist wasn't written in anyone's script. Only four people knew about it. The writer Lawrence Kasdan, the director George Lucas, the person who does the speaking, uh, uh, James Earl Jones, and um, uh, the guy who plays Luke Skywalker, I'm forgetting, Mark Hamill. Hamill. Only those four people knew about it. Everyone thought that the line was originally, Obi-Wan killed your father, which is amazing. So that's The Empire Strikes Back. Return of the Jedi, while it does have some you know childish parts to it, it is still a really fun film. So it, It's got some great action and a great way to tie up the trilogy and some amazing light terror fights. Uh, I, the special edition is n nowhere as close good as the original. But Return of the Jedi yeah, is that, another that, fun that's film. That's the same thing with every Star Wars movie. Yeah. Why, why did you have to do the special uh, editions? Why, Disney, can you please release the despecialized editions on Steelbook? It was before Disney. It was please? before Disney. I know, but still, Disney should re-release it because they have the rights, but whatever. All right. Are you so, listening, Disney? <laughs> the so, purists are here. So you already said your number two, so we're going to go over to Connor. Connor, what is your number two? My second favorite film of all time is you mean the 80s. of the 80s is The Breakfast Club. We already did a review on it, so I can't really talk much about it. But as I said, the acting was great. Um, 
the writing, great. The directing was great. Everything about this film is perfect. That's why I gave it a 10 out of 10, because everything about this film was perfect. Like, Ooh. yeah. There's All right. really much to say. I already talked about it in the review. All right, so now we are down to our number one films. Now, my number one film is also my number one film of all time, which if you watched The Breakfast Club review before this, I already spoiled, but I just said it, The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Everything about this film is amazing, and even the factors of the film that are perfect. Like, I believe that a film can be perfect, but not every factor of the film is perfect. In this movie, every factor of the film is perfect. The directing, the writing, the acting, the set design, the cinematography, everything about this film is perfect, and not only that, soundtrack. it's shot, yes, the soundtrack is amazing, but it's shot entirely in one room. It'll shock you how great a film can be when it's literally just about five kids stuck in Saturday school. I've watched it probably eight, nine, ten, maybe a dozen times, and it gets better each and every single time. The scene where they're sitting in a circle, absolutely fantastic. That is why The Breakfast Club is my number one film of all time and my number one film of the 80s. Now, what is your number one film of the 80s? Well, I had Empire Strikes Back for the reasons you picked earlier, but I'm going to give you another movie that wasn't mentioned on by no but anybody and that is Fast Times at Ridgemont High we all know what happens in that movie it's fun it's very teen it was popular um, Sean Penn before he became an acclaimed actor it was one of his first roles I loved it I had to say it. Empire is my favorite but I'm, I'm gonna go with Fast Times right here on the wall Spicoli what's up man <laughs> so that's it for me and can't wait to see that one when I'm older all right now yes Connor, definitely when you're older when, what is your number one film of all time my number one film of all time is also well it's my number one film of all time and my number one film of the 80s that is E.T. the extraterrestrial E.T. oh my god this is Steven Spielberg's by far best performance in my opinion the score is my favorite score of all time everyone in the movie was great I, I just love how E.T. is supposed to symbolize a child and it's just so wonderfully done. Everything about this film is absolutely perfect. It's beyond perfect. This, awesome. this like most people like this film, but they don't love it. I think more people should. This film should get more praise as one of Spielberg's best. Yeah. Uh, it is amazing. I agree. Ah. E.T. Yeah. is definitely an amazing film. All right. So now that we are all done, we are going to go back over our top five films. So my five, Rain Man. Four, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Three, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Two, The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And one, The Breakfast Club. Rocky Three, Top Gun, Ferris Bueller's, Raiders. And then I replaced those with Three Amigos and Lost Boys. And Empire, uh, which I replaced with Fast Times. Fast Times. Times. All right, and so I, I guess. Uh, my top five were um, Back to the Future, Raiders, um, Ferris, uh, Bueller's. Yeah, Ferris, Bueller's. Ferris Bueller's Breakfast Club, and E.T. All right, so that concludes our top five films of the 80s. Perry, thank you for letting thank us share you for, our review here. Oh, my pleasure, anytime. All right, thank you. So, I'm Robert Burke. And I'm, I'm Connor Gilbert. And I'm Perry Rumbos. All right, and this has been The Clever Critics. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ciao. Harry Badurchi? No? <laughs> <laughs>